Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about cleaning deer antlers. And this process is going to be the same to make something like just a preserved deer rack like this as it is for making something like a European mount. It's just going to be more labor intensive and take longer because you're going to have to clean an entire skull rather than just a skull plate. And it's going to be the same for cleaning bones. So if you want to make something like a like a wing bone turkey call like this, it's going to be the same process. In fact, I've got a couple of turkey wings back here that i got to make some turkey calls out of, and I'll probably do that closer to turkey season. Uh, but as you see, I've got a few racks laid out here. Uh, I don't tend to keep very many of them as actual trophies anymore. I tend to make stuff out of them like this. See, this is pretty popular to use an uh, antler for knife handles. This is one I made a few years back. It turned out really nice. As you see, it doesn't take a huge antler to do this with. That fits your hand just about perfect. Uh, but it is a simple process, it just takes some time. And you'll end up with something like this. Nice, clean, bare bone. Some people like to leave the hair on for their trophies, like this. This is one I did in 2002. You see it still looks pretty good. Uh, but you want to clean off all this nasty mess here, like all this. Let me get that off. That's all going to rot. That's fat. Clean as much of that off as you can. And then usually I use a powdered borax or salt on the skull plate here, and that turns it into rawhide. Now rawhide is basically preserved pretty much forever as long as it doesn't get wet. But if you're going to do something like this, it's probably going to be a trophy that's going to be kept inside your house. It's not likely to get wet. <laughs> so either method, you know, is fine. There's not one that's better than any other. Uh, but for cleaning these off, we're going to be boiling them. And for that, we're at least going to start with our handy Coleman Model 508B camp stove. These are actually pretty rare. Not many people have seen the 508B. We've seen the 508A. This is basically the same thing. Uh, but it doesn't hold a whole lot of fuel, and sometimes this takes a while. So, if we need to, uh, I may switch to one of like the, the two burner propane stoves or something. And we've got our pot of water here to boil. We'll take our skull plate, dunk it in there, leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes, pull it out, and hit it with a wire brush. Rinse and repeat until done. <laughs> so it's a really simple process, but if you've never seen it before, this is how to do it. Alright, I think I'm going to do all this on the floor because this table's a little bit wobbly here, so let me get everything <laughs> sorted out and then we'll get started. Alright, once this gets going good, stick our pot of water on here and we wait for it to boil. <laughs> Alright, seems to be running pretty good. Alright, well it's pretty steamy, but it's not exactly a rolling boil. I think we're good enough to start. I think I'm going to begin with this buck here that I got during the uh, deer camp of this season. Just set that in there like so. And uh, wait for it to soften up that uh, meat and hide and everything on there. And we'll start brushing it. Be able to get some of the lid over here. Yeah, there we go. That'll help a little bit. Alright, so you guys might be wondering is it possible to overdo this? Could you leave it in there too long or get it too hot and ruin the whole thing? Well, I've only seen that happen one time, and that was with my buddy. He was doing a European mount for me. 
or, or trying to do a European mount. <laughs> and it was with the first antelope that I'd ever gotten. And he was using one of those big turkey fryers, the kind that you use outdoors and you hook it up to a 20 pound propane tank. And uh, I think what happened is he actually boiled all the water out of it and just forgot about it in there. Uh, because whenever he checked up on it again, it was empty and all the bones in there were charred and black and the whole thing just fell apart. <laughs> But, I would say as long as you've still got water present in there, you really can't mess it up. I'll show you what I got going on. You want to make sure the skull plate is completely submerged. Uh, but, yeah, really, you can't do any wrong. Alright. So you see where our water level is? Right there. It is completely submerged, at least the part that's uh, important. There we go. I'll just leave that there. And, uh, well, since it's not really at a rolling boil, it's going to take a, a little while longer, but we'll give it probably you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, and we'll take it out and start scrubbing on it. All right, you can kind of see how the hide is beginning to shrink up around here. That's a real good sign. See how uh, soft it's gotten. It's getting there. It's, uh, not quite enough that it's going to want to brush off with the wire brush just yet. Yeah. But, getting close. Well, while we're waiting on that, let's talk a little bit about antlers and antler size and trophies. You know, people have been really critical about me in the past. They always ask me, why do you shoot such small bucks? You know, if you were hunting for meat, why don't you take a doe? Well, it's really simple. There wasn't a doe there to take. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to make other people happy with your hunting. Uh, I've tried in the past. You know, it's just like these uh, quality deer eugenics people. I mean, quality deer management. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the program itself. It's a great program. Uh, but it's almost like it's part of the program that you got to shame other people uh, until they start shooting deer that you know meet your standards. <laughs> and everybody hunts for their own reasons. Everybody uh, has their own idea of what a trophy is. And I remember there's been plenty of times that I've tried to to live up to other people's expectations. You know, I would say, oh, I'm going to hold off until I get a big one, because after all, everybody says, you'll never shoot the big ones if you keep on shooting the small ones. Well, uh, it doesn't really work that way. And I've killed plenty of big deer, but just most of the time, I would go home empty-handed and eventually just get frustrated because I'd see all these deer like this. I'd be perfectly happy with, and I'm letting them walk and really don't have anything to show for it. So finally, one day, I just said, you know what? If I'm happy with it, I'm going to take it. If it's legal and I'm happy, we're good to go. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you to shoot small bucks. I'm telling you, if you're happy with it, go for it. If you're not happy taking a deer like this and you want to wait for one with a giant rack, wait for one with a giant rack. I got no problem with trophy hunting. I got no problem with trophy hunters. But what I do have a problem with is people who would bully others and try to shame them. You know, hunting is a dying sport, and it seems like the worst problem that we have right now as hunters as other hunters. You know, it's not something that's easy to get into, you know, especially for somebody whose family doesn't hunt, you know. There's hunter safety classes, there's a lot of laws that you gotta follow, it's hard to find a place to do it at, and finally somebody gets one and they're real happy with it, and, and what, is, what does somebody say? That would have been a good one next year, <laughs> you know. And what kind of message is that sending? Now a lot of this is because we've been conditioned to think this way because of TV. I'm not going to mention any names of the programs here, but you probably know what I'm talking about. It's like half the outdoor network is, you know, bow hunting on the Triple Seven Ranch or the King Ranch in Texas over a corn pile. 
you know, like, of course you're going to get a big deer. You know, these other shows, you know, about management, managing properties, you know, there's one, there's a whole freaking show about these people that have, like, a, a crazy amount of land, like 100,000 acres or something like that. And, of course, it's all trophy managed, and, and they spend thousands or $100,000 a, a year managing this place. And it's been trophy managed for years and years, and guess what? You know, they're the only ones that have hunting access to it. And amazingly enough, big surprise here, they get big bucks every year. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I could find a big pumpkin in a pumpkin patch, right? <laughs> uh, I would be surprised if you didn't get a big buck out there. Like, really, what, did, what else did you expect? So, yeah, it, some of these folks are walking around like they're the ones who grew the antlers. <laughs> the dude, you didn't grow the antlers, the deer did. And really, what do I care? How big a deer's rack is if you're happy with it get it because really see this one i got with a jaguar uh crossbow and really i was not any happier or less happy with this one as i was with this one all right i got this one with a shotgun this year and i couldn't have been any happier with this one than I was with this one. All right, so what I'm saying here is let's stop all this infighting. It doesn't do anybody any good. Just recognize everybody hunts for their own reasons. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're the only one that you're in competition with. You're not in competition with other hunters. You got to do what's right for yourself. So, you know, the way I look at it, Unless you're buying my ammo or providing for me a place to hunt or paying the nearly $170 a year for my hunting license, you really don't have any place to judge how I choose to feed myself and my family. So, anyways, that's my little soapbox and I'll get off of it for now. <laughs> Let's take a look and see how well we're doing on this. starting to look pretty good. This back side here is starting to look alright. It's getting kind of rubbery. That's a good sign. I don't think it's quite soft enough that we'll be able to brush it yet. Sometimes if you got big chunks, it's helpful to just pull it off of pliers. There we go. See, it's coming off. The hardest part to get at is right at the base of the, uh, the antler there. And for that, usually the best thing to use is a knife. The old stove sounds like it's starting to run out of fuel. But getting really close to being done here. get a smaller brush to get down in here. Right, I got this smaller brush here which is really helping to get into some of these tight spots back in here.
call that done. This is looking really good. There you go. Now you can see how really uneven that cut was whenever we got that off of the deer. But that's okay. We can clean that up now with a hacksaw or even a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. It'll work just fine. Also, if you're going to use this as a trophy, uh, you want to pay attention to this angle back here. If you're going to put that on a plaque, you want to make sure that mates up with the plaque the way that you want it. Actually, that's not bad. So there you go. You just clean off that angle right there to make that even. Attach that to your plaque however you want it. And uh, make a skull plate cover. You're ready to go. <laughs> now, if you just wanted to keep this as is, maybe just put it up on a shelf or whatever. Um, there's some that, little things that you can do to the skull plate to make it look a little bit better. You can bleach it. Uh, just soak the skull plate in bleach for a couple hours and that'll make it a little bit whiter. Or you can even paint it. Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. <laughs> Everybody's looking at the antlers, not so much the skull plate, right? But yeah, there you go. Uh, the process is the same for doing, say, a European mount. It's just going to take a lot longer to do an entire skull than just a skull plate. Uh, the process is the same for working with any bones, like turkey bones, for making wing bone turkey calls or anything else that you want to use it for. There are other methods that you can use. This is just the method that I use. Uh, the whole thing start to finish. Took me about two hours. That's about average. I could have sped that up or I could have taken more time with it. Uh, you can do more of these at once if you want to. If you've got a big enough pot to stick two of these in there, go ahead. Uh, you don't have to do just one at a time. But all right, there it is. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, thumbs up. Really happy with how this turned out.